Morning, morning. Hello, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Welcome to Resilience Live, which is my weekly show that I do every Friday at 11 a.m. UK time. And it's all about things to do with your resilience, your well-being, your success, your happiness, your fulfillment, your health. Um, and that is in your personal life and also your work life. And also I do talk and will be talking more about things to do with the workplace and groups and teams and cultures and how to be healthy, resilient uh, and well and perform well at work as well. Uh, if you have never joined me before. You may notice that I keep changing the direction in which I'm looking, and that's because I've got an Instagram down here, and I've got uh, all the other platforms over that way, so I do just need to look at both um, until there's a way to actually do Instagram through the laptop, which would be fantastic. But until then, I've got some phones and some different things set up. So welcome to today's show. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you're well. I hope, first of all, that you're all doing great wherever you are, whatever you're doing at the moment. If you are there, do let me know at any point in the comments. I actually, um, I usually set up my branding and uh, let's try this. Oh, there we go. Did you see that? Sorry, Instagram, I can't see that. Um, I haven't fully set up my branding on this thing yet, so I, I will sort that out at some point. Uh, but if you are there, I do get to see some of your comments, so it'd be good to see uh, that you're there. Oh, here we go. Hello, Saliha. I'm doing well, thank you. Hey, Saliha, do you know what I also remembered? There's something that I can do on here that I forgot about that I used, because I used to do live streams quite often with somebody else, and we used to do this, and it said I can just press your comment and then you show up on the screen with your comment which i love um so that's very cool oh umesh is here as well hello darling it's lovely to see you it's lovely to see both of you thank you so much for joining um anyone else who's feeling brave uh, and wants to say hi and let me know that you're there that would be great and hello people on instagram so hey let's get into it i'm quite leery today by the way i'm sorry if i'm blinding you also it looks, oh, Celia so says can't see you but hear you properly. That's very strange. Am I frozen? Uh, I wonder if what we'll do is we'll take the Wi-Fi off of that. Do you know what it is, I reckon? Sorry, I've got like a million devices all pulling from the uh wi-fi all at the same time all here and there are others in the house many others in the house so i'm just gonna you give me a second and then Celia, let me know if it gets any better i'm i'm un -Wi -Fiing everything <laughs> so just give me like uh no screen is black weird okay let's try this How about now? This is weird. What if I do stop cam? Start cam. Uh, is my screen black for anybody else? What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go on. Oh dear me. Fun and games, hey? Normally this works so well. You guys are just going to have to give me a second. Um, let's see what I will do. Okay, I'm gonna leave Instagram there. I'm going to go on. Mm, this is not working. Really. So he says no. Oh, okay. A mesh can see me. Okay. Uh, and see, are you are you watching on um laptop or mobile? Oh, you can see me now. Good, good. Thank you, lovelies. Oh, I thought it was a Wi-Fi thing because like, I've got all these things taking the Wi-Fi at the same time. Um, but that's good. Great. Okay, cool. Hey, well, then let's crack on. I was just saying, I hope I'm not blinding you because this screen in particular is making everything look incredibly bright. It is quite bright. The Instagram is less bright. Um, but anyway, but I like it. I'm not sure if it's quite the right tones for me. I think I'm more of a sunshiny yellow rather than like a 
lemony yellow but anyway i like to wear some bright things helps me feel a little bit brighter as well um hey look let's let's crack on so thank you so much for joining me we're going to talk today about something that is so important my sweet sweet souls um i'm going to just check what i wrote as the actual title because the way that i always describe this is that you are your own guru I originally made that the title of this section, but then I thought, do people really understand what I'm saying? Like, is that a bit, oh, we're talking about gurus. Um, but essentially the title was around, you know, stop following other people's advice because you are your own guru. And I have to say, there's a couple of things actually I wanna say before I start this. There's three things I'm gonna say quickly. Uh, number one, I'm not clinically trained. I'm not giving you medical advice, psychological advice, blah, 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 blah. If you're struggling in any aspect, mind, emotions, body, spirit, not spirit, I don't know where you'd go for that, but I'm a soulist, but I'm not a physician. I'm not a, you know, I'm not clinically trained, basically, is what I'm saying in way too many words. Please go seek medical treatment. That's not what this is about. Uh, the other thing is please do comment, please do like, please do share, please do engage in the conversation because I want to talk to you and hear what you think and what your experiences are. Uh, also know that if you put a comment, it's gonna stay on the platform. So please be discerning about what you put there, make sure you're comfortable with that. And I may decide to put this comment on the screen as well. Um, so yes, as I was saying, don't don't never take advice from anybody. Don't, don't stop listening to everybody. Don't just be like, I'm not listening to anything anyone ever says. I would not be here if it wasn't for the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books and thousands of videos and the teachers and the trainings and the courses and the coaches. I would not be here if I did not have information coming from others, knowledge and wisdom from others. So I'm not saying to just block it all out, but as I go through this session, hopefully I'm gonna help you to understand what I'm really saying here. What I am saying was what a lot of people do, which is a key thing that makes you unhappy, unsuccessful um, in your life, not so resilient and not, not fulfilled, is that you blindly follow other people. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of this and you can have a think and see, oh, okay, yeah, it, did I do that? Do I do that kind of thing? Um, so the first one is, is in the world of personal development. So you're struggling in your life in some way and you want to improve, you want to get better. And so you seek out people who are teaching. And then that person says to you, uh, what I do is a, a six step morning routine. I wake up at 4 a.m. I meditate for half an hour. I then go for a run for 45 minutes. I then come home and eat this, this green juice, this thing, this thing. Then I journal for 25 minutes. Then I have a, a cold shower and then, and then I start my day. And for me, that's great. And that's what you need to do to make yourself more productive, more happy, more well, more healthy. And so you go, well, that person's really successful. They've written books. They're talking about it. It works for them. It must work for me. So off you trot, my dear sweet soul, with all the best intentions. In, and the person sharing what they do is also doing it with the best intentions. And off you trot and you wake up the next day at 4 a.m. And you say, I'm going to go for a run now. I'm gonna... And you hate it. You hate it. And it doesn't work for you. But you keep trying because we always get resistance as well, by the way, when we try new things, when we grow. So hating it is not really the the, the benchmark, the, the measure, the metric, because you may hate things that are really good for you. But there's something in you that feels like you're really having to force yourself into this direction to do these things. And if essentially what you it's because it's not for you, it's not for you. So you're forcing yourself because someone else said, and then because you're forcing yourself and it's not true for you, you'll not enjoy the process. Even after that initial resistance, you won't get through it. You'll hate it. You won't get results or you will get temporary results, which will then fall back. And basically you're going to make yourself feel worse. So all the self-help advice in the world, I say this in my trainings, I ask a room full of people who meditates regularly. A couple might put their hand up. I've had one where no one. And I said, cool. If I told you all to meditate every day, some of you would love it and thrive and it would help you. Others, you would hate it. You would struggle with it. You'd feel worse about yourself. You waste time and energy doing this thing, trying to meditate. 
you get more stressed because it's not for you. So it's not about blindly following all the wonderful bits of advice that are out there in self-help, but being able to discern them through your own wisdom. So take them in and then discern, is that true for me? Therefore, may it help me? May I try it? And that's the thing a lot of people don't do because they don't know themselves. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. So that's one area where we follow other people's advice and it actually makes things worse for us because it's not true for us. The other thing is in business, it's very common out there now as well. Everyone's like, follow my six step program and you're going to have a million pounds in a year. Um, and look again, with all of this stuff, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm not saying it won't work for some people, but this sort of carbon copy approach, you are not a carbon copy. You are not a robot. You are sovereign, unique, unfolding, flourishing of life. Your journey is yours. Your journey is unique. No one can predict your journey. No one can map your journey. No one can compare to your journey because in every moment you are uniquely having your experience. They say there's eight and a half billion worlds. No, always. Whenever I get to a profound quote, I mess it up. I'm going to do it again. They say there's one earth for eight and a half billion worlds, one in each person's head. So in your head, you're having an experience and you're unfolding, your soul is unfolding and it's not the same as mine. So just because I did 10 steps to success doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And there's a lot of people who make a lot of money and also people who spend a lot of money in these sort of six step programs, and I'm not saying it never works, but in the majority of cases, it does not work because it's not for you. You're trying to fit yourself into this carbon copy process. Your life is not a carbon copy process. It's a unique unfolding and an expression for you to navigate because you are your own guru. Talk a bit more about that in a moment. Let me know if this is making any sense to you, by the way, just give me a thumbs up or whatever, or emoji or whatever, because, um, you know, as you know, I tend to go on these sort of rants and I, I don't often know if people are actually going with me on them. Um, the other the other third one I want to say about where we take other people's advice, and it's really, really damaging, um, is generally in life. And this is what I call living by extrinsic values. And I am born and brought up with that because it's all about how does everyone else think I should live? Indian female. You grow up, you be quiet, you do as you're told, you dress down, you're seen and not heard. But even if you're seen, you don't really want to be seen, just sort of hide away in the background. Then you get your grades, then you get married to whoever your parents tell you to get married to. Then you have your babies and you go live with your in-laws. In -laws. Then you learn to cook some rotis and then you learn to feed everybody. Then you learn to pop out many babies uh, and then you die. And this, according to them, is successful life. And... So we decide, oh, well, okay, that's what I've got to do, right? So you're taking advice from them on how you should live your life. And I'll tell you from my own experience, I never wanted that life. And I never went for that life. And it's hard. But that's because I knew myself, because you are your own guru. Again, we'll talk a bit more about that phrase in a moment. But we, I know so many people who are stuck in horrible, horrible marriages, horrible situations with toxic horrible abusive in-laws and now they're stuck with the family with the and it's because they followed the advice of other people usually through shame and fear and not knowing their own inner guidance or owning the gps or having the courage to follow it which i don't mock by the way it's really hard but they end up down the line in situations that are horrible and now they're stuck in them so how do i get out of that so generally in life, you know, oh, people say you should earn this much money, you should go to school, you should get a degree. How much are we seeing now that the people who are so successful don't have degrees? It's not a marker of success, but the external world gives you values and you follow them. And you say, okay, to be successful, to be happy, I must do this, 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 this. You're taking advice, you're living from the outside in. And again, it's not true for you. It doesn't work. It makes you miserable. It gets you stuck in awful situations. And then you're trying to clamber out of them. 
So for me, all of this that I've spoken about is the outside in. Someone else has my answers. Someone else has my truth. Someone has, else has the process. Someone else knows how we should live and what would be right and what's the right thing to do in life. And this is natural to you, by the way. As soon as you're born, you start to be imprinting on, imprinted on and projected on. And because you're young, you just say, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You just take what everyone tells you and then you regurgitate it and live it. Um, and that's not a personal thing. It's just how consciousness works. But the thing is, sorry, just checking. I think my some distractions coming. I think we're okay. Um, the thing is, now we're going to go on to what, what I would suggest is that, um, by the way, I do just want to say one more thing, actually. I'm not saying that any of that stuff is wrong or bad or doesn't work. I know many people who got married, had kids, are very happy. I'm not saying it's all wrong and it's not. I'm just saying, is it true for you? And that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't realize. So hey, I feel like I've been rambling quite a lot. Uh, tell me if you're getting anything from this. I had a little thumbs up on uh, Instagram. So thank you so much for the thumbs up. Thumbs up? Yeah, thumbs up. Um, yeah, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm getting a little distracted because I can hear noise outside and it's, it's quite um, distracting. Um, soon I will not be dealing with that uh, and it would be helpful. Um, Celia says it's not for everyone for sure. No, exactly, Celia. I think you're talking about, uh, you know, the, the sort of marriage. Yeah, there's a lot of women out there who, who are made to feel bad because they don't have kids. And I'm like, you know, why? Like... So it's, it's these things, you know, you're made to feel bad or like something's wrong with you if you don't look a certain way on Instagram and if you're not earning a certain amount of money and driving a certain type of car. This is all extrinsic values that you then try and be like and try to copy people and take advice from people who are doing that. But does it fill you here? Because if it doesn't, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be resilient. Amesh says certain cultural expectations from family. That's my life, darling. And it's hard. It's really hard. So so let's look at that, because that's been a key thing for me, is that I don't know why, but I've always known what is here. Ever since little, I've, I've, I've always had a sense of here. Truth. My truth. And I don't know why. I didn't try and cultivate it. I don't know. It's just there. And... Um, I've always had this uh, this knowing that when life or people are treating me in a certain way, guiding me in a certain way, I'm like, mm, that's not really what I'd love. That's not really what's true for me. And I've always let that guide me. And the thing is, that's not an easy life to live, especially when you get older and you start to make decisions where everybody's going that way and you're going that way because your heart says go that way. And everybody's doing that and you're like, no, I want to go do this thing. Being in that sort of situation is very, very difficult. Living your truth, being your own guru in life, following your inner wisdom, your heart, your soul, your truth, your intuition, your inner knowing is not an easy path to walk. People are going to um, reject you for that. People may judge you for that. So there's so much noise right now. And uh, I don't know if I should put my headset on. I hope, if it's too noisy, just let me know. I'll put my headset on. Um, we've got some comments here. Celia says we need to not care about others' opinions. And that's really what it comes down to, you know, is the fear of what other people think. And being part of the group being part of the herd if your truth goes that way and everyone else in your life and world is going that way it's very very un uncomfortable um but the reality is that people's um innate animalistic nature is to stay in a group is to be the same there's some research out there that was done they took a herd of zebras and on one zebra they put a red cross and the red cross made the zebra stand out and basically what that meant Okay, there's a lot of noise going on. I'm so, can you just tell me if you can hear it? Because it's really distracting me. Um, Celia says, don't worry, sound is fine. Thank you, darling, because I'm really struggling. Um, she put my headset on. But then it got to sort of sort of out. So basically, there's a herd of zebras. 
they put a red cross, cross on one zebra, which meant it stood out from the group and the crowd because it was different. And then that was the one that got eaten because it got picked on and seen by the lion because it had this big red cross on it. So it's dangerous to be different. It's dangerous from an animal perspective to do what's in here and be different, especially if it means separating you from the herd. But you are not an animal. You are not a zebra. You are a highly conscious being. You are a spiritual being. You have super conscious um, abilities. You're a creator. You're a human. So being different is not going to get you immediately dead or ever dead actually a lot of the people who are very different and stand out are the ones who create the most amazing things in our world because they break the norms they go across the boundaries so so you know people's opinions if we're too worried about people's opinions we will follow them we will take their advice and then do you know what the number one regret on the deathbed is my sweet souls is that people wish they'd lived a life that was more true to themselves and I'll tell you something, it is hard. I live this. I do it every day. Everything about my life is coming from here as best I can on who am I, what do I know in my heart is true for me, what do I want, what's important to me, what do I value, and trying to live from that. And everybody around me, not everybody, but most people, particularly the ones that are most in, you know, in your relationships and have the most influence on your own psyche they're all different and yet I stand there in the middle alone and I say no not doing that no not getting married no not doing what you say no not gonna behave like this no not gonna take that not whatever it is and that's hard they say the truth shall set you free but it's also not an easy path to walk oh karen hello my sweet soul nice to see you karen good morning to you um salia says it's good that you know what's good for you do you know what i love about that salia and i'm also quite it's a challenge for me because because i kind of i want to be able to package it but i don't know how and so many people have said to me in my life, and especially since I've been teaching seven odd years or so, they've said to me, how do you know your truth? How do you know what you value, what you want, what you love and be guided? How do you know what your inner guru, your inner GPS is saying? How do you know it? Because I, for some reason, have just always known it. I'm not saying it's always clear. There are definitely situations in life and decisions I make where I'm like, oh, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what's right for me. I don't know what's true for me. But for the real important things, who I am, and that it grows and evolves and becomes clearer to me as I get older. But in any given moment, I'm all, I'm most of the time, feel pretty certain in, in this. And, and, and people ask me, how do you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. I wish I could tell you what, you know how people say, people say when you're in love, like real love, they say when you know, you know. Now I can't speak to that from experience. I haven't experienced that, but I experienced that with these things in my life. So for me to be teaching, speaking, wanting to work in this industry, wanting to build my own career and life and work in this industry and spend my life exploring human development, I just know. There's no question. And that's just always been the way since that awareness came to me many years ago. So you just know. And sometimes it's a little bit more complex in that you get the intuition, the instinct that, oh, no, it doesn't, doesn't resonate with me. Resonance, your energy, everything is energy. What reverberates through you is truth. They say the truth has a ring to it. Boom, I feel it. I see it. I know it. I sense it. Done. Yep. Go that way. Don't go that way. And the more you practice this, even in the little moments, hmm, in this moment, what does my inner GPS tell me? Not what is everyone else telling me to do? Go to a restaurant and choose your own meal. <laughs> Maybe you do this anyway, I do. But often we're like, oh, what are you having? What are you having? Maybe you should have, a no, stop. No outside information required. You, you, yourself, your wisdom, your mind, your body, your soul. What do I want to eat? What's obvious to me about what I want to eat? I'm picking that, go for it. Practice doing your life from inside out. 
And in each moment, what would I love to do right now? What would serve my body, my mind, my soul right now? Hmm, maybe it's a walk. Then I'm just going to go for a walk. I don't care if other people say, right now you should be doing a, a meeting or whatever, or you should be working because it's this time. No, I need a walk. I'm going for a walk. So it's the every moment awareness of how to navigate your life guided by your own inner GPS. Which, by the way, like all GPS, will only ever give you the next step. When you put a destination in your GPS, it doesn't tell you the whole journey. It says turn left here, and you go left. Then it goes turn right, and you go right. Your intuition, your inner guidance, your inner guru, your inner wisdom is going to navigate your life in the same way for you. So you have to be present here in the moment and sensitive to that awareness. Okay, right now I'm going to go for a walk. Cool. So instead of here's a 10-step morning routine that everyone tells me I should do, to be resilient and well and happy. Actually, all I need right now is this morning, I'm going to just go and get some sunshine for 10 minutes. That's it. That's what comes through for you. What I love to do, mm, bask in the sun. Cool, done. You don't need all this advice and programs from everybody else. You are your own guru and do it moment to moment. Let's take some comments. Um, oh, we've done that one. Celia says, but when you talk to other people, you realize they wish they could do what you do. They admire you silently. I think, you know, oh, you hit, you always hit on it. You, you, I love you. I you always hit on, I love you all, by the way. Like everyone who even takes a minute of their life to watch me. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Um, but Celia, that's exactly it, right? And you have to stand strong in your truth when that kind of situation is happening. I'm going to put that up so people can just read that properly um, as you articulated it just perfectly there. You know, you talk to other people and you realize they wish they could do what you do. They admire you silently. Like people do look at me like the fact that I didn't get into that kind of that marriage situation and lots of people got stuck in that and are not happy. And I, I, I said, no, dude, I tell you people, I had rage arguments from other people screaming at me rage because I said no I'm not marrying that guy no I'm not interested in that guy I had terror and fear and shame pummeled down on me because I said no I don't want that guy I don't want to get married so believe me you want to follow your truth you better learn to be a warrior you better learn to get courage and know that in the moment it is hard but ultimately you will be connected to this because you honored this and that will make you the most powerful resilient happy successful person that ever walked the earth and people will look at you like Saliha says oh god how'd you get there why are you so happy how did you succeed in all this stuff how come so you're you're, you're 80 years old and you're so young and vibrant because I stayed true to this. I did not cave to the pressures of the world trying to make me something I'm not. I honor God. And that to me means something can mean whatever to you. You don't have to use that word. I was created by something up there. I'm a child of God. I'm not a child of my parents. I'm not a child of society. I'm not a product of the world and society and human beings and their skewed thinking and their ideas and their, their things of what they think is important and what they think I should do it has no bearing on me. I was made by something else. Please leave the room. Thank you. Oh, was... <laughs> oh, lost my flow now. Thanks, Squish. You want to come join me? <laughs> As I was saying, um... Oh, I lost my flow, lost my flow. See, now I've got to learn to get back into the flow when distractions like that happen in life. Um, but basically, yes, I am connected to that and I go for that and I, I, I let that guide me and I'm not here to try and be like everybody else and do what everyone else suggests. So let's have a few more comments because I lost that. Oh, it's so annoying because I really like, you know when you know that you're like, ooh, I'm going somewhere with this. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming and I want to ride that wave. And it's gone because got distracted. Sorry. Sorry. Um, okay. Let's have some more comments because we're almost at time. Uh, sadly, it's not good to be different or be a black sheep, especially in an Indian family. I'm talking from experience. Oh, Amesh, we can talk about this all day, all night, man. You mean we talk about this all day, all night. 
I will get on to that in a second. I'll just do Karen's comment here. Lovely to see you and all this positive message. Thank you, my sweet soul. Um, yeah, it's uh, thanks for joining, Karen. It's really nice to see you. So it's been so long, uh, but I, I do this every week. So if at any point you want to join live, um, that would be great. Or you can watch these people afterwards. They stay up on the platforms. But what Amesh has said there, do you know, I think, I think what Amesh has said there is really why I am so doing this message. This is why I am teaching this. This is why I say that you are your own guru, because my entire life can be summed up by that. And a lot of it is cultural. And it is the pressure since born to be be something that you're not. And on top of the culture, I personally grew up in very toxic, unhealthy, abusive environment. And that then adds more pain to the mix where you're being made to be this and everything outside of you and inside your heart's like, but, but this is me, this is what I want, this is, you know. And so I've had to live my life like that every step of the way particularly in those young years and particularly with things like getting married and stuff like that, which is really uh, big life decisions. And so I'm, you know, I, Amesh, I'm like you, maybe I don't know, but, but I'm related to like what 50 odd cousins just in this country, you know, like I'm probably related to hundreds of people. And that's once we start counting like the marriage in-laws and whatever, basically I'm pretty much the only one who didn't go down that route, the traditional route get an arranged marriage, or not even an arranged marriage, just get married, have babies, get a house, blah, 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 blah. No, I'm, I'm busy quitting my corporate career to follow my, <laughs> my crazy dreams of doing this. Um, and, and I didn't follow that path. And it's really hard. But do you know what's harder for me? Waking up each day and living a life that's not true to who I am. That makes me puke inside and outside probably as well. I do not like the idea of waking up and living an inauthentic life. Um, and so I choose my truth instead. And that makes it hard. But I, I can't wake up and live a life that's not true to me. Even if I'm not happy with the life, at least I know I chose it. At least I knew I was going in the path of what was true for me. Even if things aren't, were going great, at least I know I chose myself. Um... Black sheep as well, you said, actually. I, I heard it called the psychedelic sheep. Oh I'm like, yeah. That's what I'm about. I'm just like a delic sheep. Everyone likes to follow the crowd and follows other people's advice. You gotta understand something, Amesh. Most of the population won't understand what we're talking about, won't understand why you can't just do what you're told, won't understand why you want to be different, won't understand why your heart wants something else. They don't even know you have a heart, let alone they have a heart. When you say heart, they'll think, oh yeah, you got this muscle in there pumping blood around your body. They don't know anything beyond that. So they won't get you. They're just here to perpetuate systems and structures. In, a, in our culture, we are not individuals in a family. We are just a family. We are a system, a group. And each individual plays a role to uphold the system, uphold the group, uphold the culture, the way that we do things as Indians and whatever. You have no space for your heart, your truth, your sovereign nature, who you were created here to be. And that's sad, and that causes a lot of stress and unhappiness and makes us weak mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and, and really affects us. Um, we have, so, yes, yeah, says, have you read Khalil Gilbrand's The Prophet? No, uh, I know some, I, mean, I see a lot of quotes by Khalil, but I haven't read The Prophet. Great read for someone who wants to detach from unwanted toxic people. I think I could do with that, darling. Uh, I'm going to write that down. Thank you, sweet boy. I, um, I do love that kind of, um, let me write this down, that kind of work from those kinds of people. The prophet. Is it, Celia, is it like, because I read um, this, I think it was Shams of Tabriz, Tabriz, and it's called The 40 Rules of Love. And I, I've seen that elsewhere, and it's literally 40 beautiful rules of love. And I would also say love as truth, one and the same, very spiritual, very amazing. But it turned out the book was kind of like a story, and I didn't really like it. So is this one a story, or is this one more of an actual 
advice kind of not advice but you know like a, an actual like non-fiction let me know um but i will definitely check it out so hey look we're coming to time um sorry we had noise distractions you probably can't hear it. i can hear it constantly it's really annoying me i should have put my headphones on didn't do it never mind um so, but anyway, that's not the point. The point is, uh, keep on going. And this is the thing about resilience. I was watching someone else's video about this as well. Someone who's very, very famous. And she started her video and she was in a real state because she was having tech issues. And she just kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. Um, and that's what I'm learning as well, right? Is just keep going. Just whatever you're doing. If it's your truth is here, you're following it. Just keep going going no matter what obstacles no matter what roadblocks if it's here it will propel you forward when i teach resilience my silver bullet to resilience is living from here is living your true nature and living authentically from your heart from your soul that's the silver bullet you can do the mindset work you can do the emotional work you can change your behaviors you can look at your physical health you can look at your environment around you. All very good stuff. All will help build resilience and help you and develop. But you know how you just clear all of that and just supercharge it all? Go here, live from that. Innate resilience. As soon as you start living from that place, you will be shocked at how much power you have, how strong you are, how much courage you have to keep going in whatever it is you're doing, to get through challenges, to keep growing, to keep learning your creativity, your genius, your health, your well-being, you'd be surprised because this is the seat of your consciousness, the seat of your soul. And so if we get that, we live from there inside out, it will affect everything else. But everyone's living outside in. They don't know who they are. They don't know their power. They say, you tell me the answer, Pinky. How should I feel better? You tell me. And look, I will always say whatever I can say in the moment. But, but my premise and my ethos is you are your own guru. Don't listen to me. Listen to me through your own wisdom. Take it in. Does it resonate? No. Toss it aside then. So my aim is to help you realize that you are your own guru that you have your answers within. But it does take practice to learn that because most people don't know themselves because we're not taught to know ourselves. So how would you know what to do if you don't even know how to listen to yourself? So that's something I'm trying to learn about. Um, not learn about, I'm learning about how to translate that to you in a way that it doesn't sound so wishy-washy of like, I just know, I just know, I just sense it. I don't know if there's any other words to describe it. Um, but we all have that within us. So, Sia says, it's poetry, philosophy, it's really, oh yeah, no, I'll like that. I will like that. Thank you, lovely. I will write that down. Um, there's one that I really love, Sia. I, I've packed all my books away, which I, uh, um, it's a yellow book. And it's called something like Philosophy, Spirituality, Mysticism. And I want to say it's, is wrapped Khan, something like that. Can't remember, but I think it's all philosophy, spirituality, mysticism, something like that, psychology, spirit. I'm uselessly trying to explain this book to you. Uh, and I'm still getting distraction by so I'm really trying my best. I'm sorry. Um, but it's really good. It's very good. In the back, it has some beautiful phrases, poetic quotes that are really just magical. And then throughout the book, it just teaches you so much. I love all that stuff. So thank you for the recommendation. Um, I will definitely look for that. And I'm going to sign out because I'll run over a little bit as always. I should probably just stop saying that. I made it a half hour session and I always do like 33 minutes, 35 minutes, 38 minutes. Um, so maybe I should just stop apologizing and say, let us how it goes. And I hope you got something out of today. Uh, thank you so much as always for joining. We had Saliha, we had Umesh and Karen all with your wonderful comments. Um, I hope this gives you something to think about. And thank you people on Instagram as well. And really just, uh, you know, my, my, my final message there really is live from the inside out. Live, know that in here is all the guidance and wisdom that you ever need. And that should be your North Star, your central place that you move from in every moment, whether it's business, health, well-being, success, relationships, doesn't matter what is here. Allow that to guide you. 
And it takes practice to connect to that and to live through that because we've been taught not to listen to it. We've been taught to listen to everybody else. They don't know anything. They don't even know themselves. Why are you guiding your life by people who don't even know themselves? They're trying to guide you? No, come back home, learn to understand and intuit and sense your truth. And in the little steps, start to guide yourself by that. And the little, okay, I'm going to eat this right now. I'm going to go for that walk right now. I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to try that. I'm going to make that phone call. Little baby steps guided from here. And you'll get stronger and stronger and more and more clear. And the knowing will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And you will start to really sense who you are and what you want in your life. And you can just be going for that. Uh, I'm going to head off. And yeah, by the way, if you think, like, why she close her eyes? I'm very visual and a lot of time to really get messages across, particularly when I'm distracted, I have to close my eyes and just, I, I sort of see it in my mind. Um, so I didn't like, well, whatever. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't know why I need to explain myself. It is what it is. Thank you, Amesh. I'm going to leave now. Thank you, my sweet soul. Thank you for being here. Thank you for always contributing. I love it. And I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Your comments are amazing. And thank you everybody else, Leah and Karen. And I hope you all have a really wonderful Friday. And, uh, and a wonderful weekend. And I will see you again next Friday for the next Resilience Live. Take care, my sweeties. Bye-bye.